good morning everyone hope everyone is safe and healthy and coping well in these unprecedented times insurance is one of the worst hit sector post covid 19 outbreak and one of the sectors that has to that has been pushed to adopt to new technologies to overcome these challenges today's webinar is another step towards understanding the power of technology to ease these challenges the title of the webinar is transforming the insurance landscape using new gen low code platform i am ruchika shivastav and shall be your host and the coordinator for this webinar today our speakers today are mr sushil zaregaonkar director financial services advisory ernst and young and mr shantanu tiwari head of center of excellence insurance new gen software they are the industry leaders and have been instrumental in digitally transforming processes for across the world in the insurance sector at the end of these presentations we will have the questions and answer session we request you to type your questions in the go to webinar question window anytime during the webinar and i shall take them up at the end of the session with our experts now it's over to you sushil thank you very much uh, ruchika i hope i am uh, clearly audible uh and uh, welcome yes. everybody uh, to this webinar uh, a very good morning to all of you i hope uh, everybody is keeping safe i think these are unprecedented times and uh, you know everybody is is going through uh, some sort of a, a challenge or the other uh, but uh, we do hope that things do improve very quickly and and life comes back to normal uh, but in the meantime uh, you know uh, we've seen uh, uh, the industries uh also taking a huge impact and uh, and it's not just one singular industry it's across we've seen that the current crisis has has resulted in a in a major global slowdown something that was never anticipated or is unprecedented uh, there has also been uh, you know uh, economic decline the the economic activities uh themselves have gone down substantially because of uh, uh you know the lockdown effect uh the manufacturing has taken a hit uh, people are losing uh their jobs uh on a daily basis and i think uh, uh it you know we do hope that you know it is only a temporary shutdown but there will be a, um, a case that some businesses might just uh never recover from this uh the consumers also uh, are uh, are getting impacted uh the consumption is not the same uh, people are only buying what is necessary for them and there's going to be a shift uh in the in the demand uh you know people will only uh focus on their immediate and absolute essential needs uh for some time to come uh spending patterns will be very very different uh many people will also move towards digital uh buying and and we've already seen uh some trends around that in the last month and a half people don't want to venture out uh, go to uh, you know shops or uh, go to offices uh wherever it is possible to transact digitally uh and that's going to be a major uh, shift in the way businesses are conducted uh, but along with that uh, we'll also see a lot of uh, uh, surge in, in digital or cyber crime Uh, we've already seen some some sort of examples where people have been uh, uh you know uh, uh indulging into fraudulent activities in terms of uh, uh you know uh, the monetary transactions so this is something that's that's going to see uh, uh you know a major uh, spike uh, in the in the coming days till the time that the customers or the consumers become aware of uh, of the uh, the pitfalls uh, so some of the challenges that uh, and that the organizations are facing uh because of the current crisis is how do you acquire new customers uh the customers don't come to you you can't go to the customer especially in the in the areas where there's a lockdown or there are red zones uh getting on new customers is going to be very very difficult uh most of uh, our insurance um, processes are still paper driven especially you know complex products need uh explanations they need uh signatures wet signatures they need uh, a, a physical interaction uh 
uh, before the customer actually buys it and that's not going to be possible uh, with the containment and the social distancing that that we see and that's it's going to be here for some time to stay uh, there's a lot of dependency on uh, you know interpersonal interactions and uh, if you if you think of it uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a lot that's going to now ride on how your agents or how your employees interact with the customers how do they give them comfort and and how do they actually ensure that the customers demands or needs are met and they're able to you know strike that uh, that chord it's not going to be pure transactional uh, selling anymore the other uh, challenges are around operations uh, you know most of the uh, offices in the red zone are completely shut uh, that means you know your workforce is not going to be available for you uh, many of the tasks that uh, uh, need the workforce to be physically present in the office can't uh, can't be executed anymore which is going to add to your cost and it's going to slow down your operations uh, the old uh, uh, you know traditional systems uh, are are never designed with the mobility thought process uh, for example in in india most of the life insurance companies had done their setup more than 10 years ago uh, and while some of them have uh, adopted mobility very actively uh, there are the other ones who who have fallen behind the curve uh, on a lot of operational related uh, tasks and that sort of adds a lot of pressure uh, on ensuring how do you uh, you know stay afloat in, in such challenging times uh, the process and technology overall also has uh, has uh, been uh, impacted because uh, many of these organizations were never ready for such crisis uh, when you talk about having a, a partial or a remote working environment these were models that were never adopted or tried or tested in the earlier times but now when uh, the current crisis sort of set in people had to immediately change the way of working and there was no time and uh, the process and the technology was just not ready to cater to that and that still continues uh, while many of them have overcome in the past month and a half but there are still organizations who are reeling with uh, with these uh, with these issues there are a lot of uh, uh, challenges also even if you do find uh, a way to improve the process or you know fix a technology uh, gap there's still challenges because of the legacy systems integrating or adding a new functionality or a feature on top of a legacy system becomes extremely difficult it's not uh, uh, easy to integrate it's not quick you can't uh, uh, turn around uh, and uh, and provide the experience to your employees or your customers that very easily when you're dealing with legacy systems uh, there's a lot of lack of automation also while as i said there are a lot of um, uh, adoption done by insurance companies from the front uh, uh, facing uh, interactions most of the back end processes uh, are still very manually driven especially uh, uh, claims related or uh, you know traditional operational processes they are they are far more manual uh, and that's also impacting uh, both the operational efficiency and the cost now uh, if you talk about um, regulatory compliance again uh, another area which was very paper heavy insistence on physical signatures insistence on uh, the agents meeting the customers uh, you know needing physical uh, documentation for verification all of these uh, have added uh, a burden on on the operational processes you can't really sell or service your customer uh, digitally because of of these areas and uh, restrictions and because of uh, because of these restrictions uh, the companies have also not been able to really adopt digital and this is a major challenge um, now because of the uh, the covid 19 crisis uh, as i had alluded to this uh, cyber security is going to be a uh, another major challenge most for most of the uh, cso's or the it heads because as you move or make a shift to digital channels or digital systems and adoptions you're going to have to ensure that you know your consumers are you know protected and your own organizations and processes are protected from cyber crime uh, it puts a, uh, a heavy emphasis on uh, the uh, the digital the it and the ciso to work together now uh, uh, to ensure that uh, you have a safe operating uh, environment as far as the technology landscape is concerned so all of these challenges if you see are actually now giving a digital push uh, so uh, the 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 uh, the fundamental pillars of your organization will all start to look 
towards how digital adoption uh, will will uh, happen over the course of the next six to eight months and and obviously it's not just about now uh, it's going to be the next and the beyond as well because you know you're obviously going to do things that will help you fix uh, your situation currently with a uh, with a quick fix a fix but then you want to have uh, agendas for your next uh, sort of uh, uh, time frame where you know you want to build on the digital adoption that you start now and then it's going to be beyond where you actually grow and thrive uh, in the market because there will be some consolidation uh, that we expect to happen over the course of 6 to 8 months so let me talk about uh, what we've seen um, uh, and uh, what we've observed insurance companies uh, doing uh, currently to sustain uh, in, in this crisis. Uh, we've seen uh, a lot of insurance companies adopt the remote working uh, environment. People have been uh, working back to ensure that uh, they, uh, they give their employees or um, uh, train their employees to adopt the digital channel and how do they uh, basically help them settle in the work from, work from home environment. Uh, insurance companies have also been promoting um, the self-service channels uh, quite a bit. Uh, the basic FAQs are a passe. They're basically bringing in artificial intelligence backed chatbots to do all the basic customer servicing uh, on the digital channel itself because your call centers are not uh, staffed adequately uh, now and that puts an emphasis on promoting self-service channels and it will also reduce your operational cost in the long run. Uh, most of the um, uh, essential services which are required uh, for functioning but are not possible now, uh, they've been uh, uh, adopting low-code digital platforms to be plugged on top of the legacy system to help enable uh, those essential services uh, very quickly and, and help customers and employees uh, get on board there and a lot of the uh, ecosystem is also supporting uh, in that most of the uh, the IT vendors or most of the solution providers are now coming up with uh, these solutions that can fit easily on top of a legacy platform and at least help you get started with your essential services. Uh, the customer engagement uh, is also a, a, a very important aspect and we've seen uh, insurance companies in the last one month uh, and they continue to do so, uh, put an emphasis on communication, being in touch with your customers, being close to them, uh, informing them about uh, uh, you know the, uh, the trends or the updates or any changes to their products and services is a, uh, is a key to keep the customer going with you beyond the crisis. If you lose your customers now, you may not be able to get them back uh, anytime soon. So this is what companies are essentially doing in terms of, um, in terms of sustenance. Uh, the next part beyond sustenance is adapting because uh, the COVID-19 crisis has really uh, pushed companies to adopt uh, digital. I mean, even the companies who were on their path have now expedited that, that journey. And uh, we believe that this new digital adoption is going to be uh, normal and it's here to stay. So you have to start thinking about what will you do beyond your sustenance to ensure that the digital adoption or the journeys that you've started on right now as part of the expediting process stay on and, and bear the fruits. Uh, some of the areas uh, which we feel uh, will be important will be around automation uh, and uh, you know having quick wins uh, around how do you do digital customer onboarding because as I said, customers are not going to be uh, coming into your branches or your offices or uh, you know it's not going to be possible for your agents to go and meet them a uh, lot of uh, emphasis again on uh, online uh, training and information both to your uh, internal staff and your agencies uh, because you know there will be a, a lot of skill repurposing that will happen because of the automation that you drive in so you need to ensure that uh, your your staffs are now skilled enough to work in the new digital um, environment. Uh, a lot of these processes which are manual uh, and paper driven need to be automated. For example, underwriting, for example, claims processing. These are areas which we think uh, will see a significant uh, adoption of digital uh, going forward. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute. We also feel that there's going to be a lot of collaboration with uh, uh, with fintechs. Uh, we've seen a trend where most of the fintechs who are working with the banks and the NBFIs 
are also trying to come up with use cases for the insurance industry and uh, and there's going to be a convergence of the fintechs and the insure tech solutions and we've already seen that especially around the uh, areas of uh, kyc customer contactability data enrichment uh, and i think going forward this synergies will come into play and and it's an area to watch out for um, it would be um, uh, immensely helpful if uh, uh, if you look at what your uh, uh, peers in the banking or the nbfi industries have adopted uh, because those industries were a little bit more mature a little less paper um, intensive in, in terms of the products so you will want to see how the fintechs have operated and helped them uh, so that you know you can bring the option here because it is getting support from the regulator as well across the globe uh, the second pillar is around the virtualization of the services uh, it is uh, uh, it goes without saying that you know creating um, uh, digital um, assets uh, which are going to be tailored to your customer segment is is absolutely important uh, you cannot have generic uh, solutions or generic uh, uh, products anymore uh, as you go digital people will look for specific need based uh, services or products and i think uh, that uh, uh, stresses an importance of investing into uh, uh, tools which actually help you uh bring uh, out the collaboration and help you re-engineer the processes and help you digitize the the entire ecosystem that you operate in uh the third is uh, you know establishing a digital platform we've seen a lot of collaboration uh happening between uh industries and and when i say that uh you, we've seen uh e-commerce interacting a lot with fintechs uh e-commerce interacting with banking insurance and this collaboration is here to grow and you will uh, see how uh, companies start to acquire customers on the back of each other. You start originating a customer on your partner's platform and then bring them in, uh, support them with various products on their platform. Uh, likewise, how do you bring other partners onto your platform? This is going to be an important uh, pillar going forward and an important area as part of your digital uh, adoption uh, we've seen uh, consumers uh, you know actually showing a huge appetite for omni channel experience they want to come on one particular channel and ensure all their needs are met there even if they drop from that channel to another channel the experience they want it to be the same so there's going to be a major push uh, towards establishing a digital platform and how do you adopt technology there uh, even if your legacy systems stay the same you could essentially carve out a digital uh, platform which is allowing you to onboard your customers there and also service your customers needs at that level itself without having to touch the uh, or make changes into the legacy system uh, goes without saying you're going to have to leverage a new and uh, and emerging tech uh, uh, there is going to be uh, with the digital adoption uh, a, a spike in your transactions on the digital channels there's also going to be a lot of variability that's going to come uh, there is a lot of security and maintenance that will come along with it and it only makes uh, more sense to adopt cloud-based models for operational resi resiliency shift towards more of an agile business model backed with artificial intelligence and machine learning platforms and see how you could use automated tools and workflows to ensure that the manual interventions are minimized and most of the uh, customer servicing can happen on on these new platforms by leveraging the new technologies the last as i said uh, is going to be about how do you thrive uh, once the crisis sort of settles down as I said, we expect that there's going to be a major uh, consolidation uh, that we uh, we believe is going to happen into uh, uh, eight to nine months from now, uh, and that's going to be on account of companies going through uh, a lot of transition uh, themselves. Uh, and in in that uh, sort of scenario, there will be some important uh, pillars that uh, that insurance companies will have to look look at and you know in our interaction with most of the uh, business or the IT heads of insurance companies uh, we've uh, analyzed that your enterprise will have to be far more connected and will have to be far more analytical uh, in terms of how you acquire and how you service your customers and how you manage your workforce uh, ecosystem partnerships are going to be a major play uh, and as part of your adoption i think you should prepare to set that up because that's what will help you thrive uh, on the other side of the crisis you will have to uh, work with your ecosystem players to 
to ensure that business continuity and business growth are sustained uh, the adoption of analytics in both sales and services is going to be immense there are going to be a lot of new data points that are available which may not be within your organization and again the partnerships that you that you make and the collaboration that you have with your ecosystem is going to play a major role in you know helping you get access and insights out of the data which again helps you improve your product offerings and also you know your customer service the uh, overall experience will also go through a shift many organizations are going towards uh, digital and that means customers will have uh, uh, you know uh, more demand towards a, a richer experience uh, more personalized uh, uh, you know uh, conversations or uh, discussions and you would also have to empower your your field force uh, to ensure that you know they are able to service their customers then they're on the spot this three areas will ensure that the the customer experience and the uh, the customer service uh, is again top notch which will help you differentiate in the market uh, you will have to have uh, uh, relevant offering personalized services and valued services that that come along with your partnerships uh, you will have to keep innovating continuously on how you build products that are for a specific need for a customer and how do you have tools and data points that enable your agents to take decisions that are helping them serve the customer better this i believe will be a framework that insurance companies will adopt uh, going beyond the uh, the crisis so the sustain adopt and thrive is how we we set a sort of framework uh, just to summarize uh, what what i've been talking about so far uh, we believe that the the future ready insurance uh, business post the crisis uh, will have you know broadly uh, these pillars uh, and you know these are going to be the focus areas for cios ceos and ceos uh, contactless sales as i said uh, you know you're not going to see your customers uh, physically very soon um, agency upskilling you need to uh, repurpose and align your agency staff uh, to support you do the digital sale and servicing you have to have a right product mix and you have to continuously innovate on on the products so that you know they meet your customer requirements you'll have to use a lot of uh, ai and ml uh, to bring in efficiencies and bring in digital process adoption uh, in the entire journey for customer onboarding and servicing uh, you'll have to automate a lot of processes uh, which help you bring operational efficiencies and save cost and help you sustain in the long run uh, remote work, working is going to be a norm a lot of your uh, office functions could be moved uh, to remote working uh, micro insurance uh, again we feel that there's going to be a huge stress on the insurance uh, sector especially in in developing countries because the covid-19 uh, situation has only exposed uh, the fact that insurance companies uh, are still not well penetrated into the rural market and that's going to be the next big wave of market that you need to be ready for and digital adoption will play a key role there and ensuring the customer service is more digital so that you know your dependence on call center setups minimizes and your operational costs uh, uh, you know sort of uh, come down uh, at the uh, at the end uh, i would again like to reiterate cyber security is going to be a, a major concern and that's where uh, you know uh, your uh, uh, IT partners or service providers such as uh, NewGen who have uh, the end-to-end -end solution which is developed and tested uh, for scale and for uh, for security uh, will come into play. And I think Shant Shantanu will talk a little bit more about it. Uh, but I'd like to stop here and, uh, and hand it over. Uh, and uh, over to you. Thanks, Sushil. That was a quite an insightful session. So I'll pass it on to Shantanu now. Yes. Uh, so thank you, Sushil. I think that was really a very really insightful talk on uh, you know of the challenges that the insurance industry is currently facing and probably the way forward for them in terms of um, you know agility and adoptability i think that that is going to be uh, something which is 
the key going forward in terms of how insurance companies respond to the challenge that are there and that will probably you know even amplify in the coming days so with this i'll, I'll basically take this you know discussion forward in terms of um, how nugen uh, as a systems or as an it solution provider can help achieve um, a lot of these objectives in the short run as well as in the long term uh, for insurance organizations so you know uh, as the social rightly mentioned the focus uh, would definitely shift a lot more to you know being digital being connected uh, being able to quickly adapt to new compliances to new market needs and that is where you know it would not just be uh, the processes that needs to be uh, flexible and agile it would even needs to be the backbone of uh, you know any insurance company which are the it systems which needs to be really adaptable and flexible you know to to actually bring about the changes in them very fast and and you know um, bring this bring in this entire flavor of a digital customer experience going forward obviously you know um, again as rightly mentioned as ashish you know probably the, the in person interactions are going to be very minimal at least uh, in the near future and that is where a lot of selling especially in in the life insurance space which still you know involves a lot of personal interaction between the sales agents and the customer needs to minimize and there needs to be you know uh, icd2 supporting uh, mechanisms wherein you know the interaction can be digital and then you know it, it can be uh, much more quicker than what it was uh, earlier to be and for that to happen organizations needs to have agile layers on top of their you know legacy systems through which it can actually be achieved was one of the major challenges that you know most of the insurance companies would be facing not just in india but across the globe is you know a, a lot of uh, the, the existing legacy applications are not designed with, with the objective of you know being agile and being adaptable and that is where you know um, companies need to look at uh new technologies which would work in sync with these legacy application but at the same time provides this much much needed agility that is the need of the hour so you know uh, this is what something which we are going to cover in the subsequent slides uh, you know i just wrote it uh, as part of brief agenda wherein we are just taking an example or one of the scenarios which typically would be uh, required in uh, the days to come what are the challenges and what are the impact that it poses how a platform like a low code platform uh, you know actually can help overcome such challenges and the benefits associated with it and eventually then coming on to what is newgen actually offering uh, as part of its solution on top of this platform for insurance companies and then you know we'll talk about a few case studies as well where organizations have you know adopted such technologies and and have achieved benefits out of it so you know uh, we uh, would basically uh, try to understand the scenario with a small example obviously this is just one of the scenarios there can be multiple of such scenarios which might be relevant for insurance companies in the current times so uh, what we have taken uh, an example it is the you know example for new product launch which we are assuming that you know with the changing uh, compliance needs with the changing risk needs organization companies may try to uh, or would definitely want to relook at the product mix that they have and they would want to launch new products or maybe even change the the configurations of their existing products going forward so you know, typically you know if we have to look at how such an activity happens inside any insurance company we've just tried to elaborate it with an example so let's assume there is a requirement for new product roll out that needs to happen so obviously you know you'll have a lot of different teams who come together who huddle together and and they you know sort of uh, define the role and responsibilities of each of these companies when it comes to uh, you know the things required for a new product launch and once there is an agreement from all these business units you know they reach out to the it team they initiate a request it team obviously because um, of of the backlog would have the option to prioritize these requests depending upon the criticality and then they will analyze the scope and feasibility because we we still uh, you know um, are assuming uh, the fact that a lot of these changes needs to be done on legacy platforms which may not be very agile to make these changes in in you know in a short period of time and that is where you know it follows the typical 
you know, uh, software development life cycle within the IT a team can request back for business requirements uh, document from the cast uh, from the various business teams. The business team then you know based on the actions which are required or, or based on the, uh, the activities that are required to be done for a product launch create their own different business requirement documents you know in terms of product teams defining the benefits the underwriting team defining the criteria and compliances the sales team uh, you know defining the agency access controls you know the marketing team defining the various templates the letters the contracts that needs to be you know uh, generated as part of the new product and then you know they they, they come out with all these uh, requirements back to the team who then actually codes and builds these requirements in the system you know obviously this this again takes a substantial amount of time and once the code coding activity is done eventually it is released to UAT which is the user acceptance testing and then it all again follows uh, iterative uh, testing scenarios and when eventually once it is approved it then moves to staging you know wherein uh, the IT teams uh, estimates the downtime, migrates the code. So there's a lot of activities that eventually needs to be done when you know uh, it is required to launch a product. Now this entire cycle may take as long as 30 to 40 business days, depending upon how complex is the product and you know how how well developed is is uh, you know coding in the legacy system. Now this becomes you know this would have been okay in a conventional scenario, but then you know with the changing market scenario, this is something which would lead to the loss of competitive edge to any insurance companies because you know someone else may you know, go ahead and launch a product with similar or uh, you know features in a much shorter span of time which eventually results in a loss of market for insurance companies so you know just to highlight certain challenges which is which is normally associated with such an approach obviously you know development time or time taken to bring the products to the market is very high and that is something which may not be acceptable given the current scenarios or given the current challenges wherein you know uh, the, the organization needs to be much more agile technological relevance obviously you know the, the more changes or the more complex changes that you try to bring inside a system which is of legacy nature requires you to also get people who are you know uh, experts in those legacy technologies which becomes a problem you know in the current time you don't actually get a lot of people who are experts in, in working on mainframe technologies or legacy uh, platforms like es400 which which then obviously delays or further extends the time frame the it and vendor dependency this is again huge because you know you'll, you'll have to reach back to your it because a lot of inherent code in these applications is something which is managed by your it vendors so they, they basically would have to you know uh, give you back the estimates there would be a cost factor involved and there would be a time factor involved which which again creates a challenge and eventually the it governance which is again a very critical aspect when it comes to the problem of shadow it which is where you know um, because of lack of you know such applications uh, you know typically business users tends to use a lot of non-sanctioned IT applications to solve their business problems which eventually you know leads to a lot of uh, you know problem when it comes to you know regulations and, and IT security so these you know probably are some of the challenges which typically would be associated with such a conventional approach so then you know probably uh, what may be the solution going forward so uh, you know one of the things that actually can help insurance companies overcome this entire challenge is to adapt technologies which are low code so basically when we say low code it is the ability for the, the, the solution to be developed quickly without the need of a lot of actual uh, lines of code to be written you know without a need to you know be tested as comprehensively as a conventional uh, software development cycle requires and eventually that actually helps the time to uh, you know uh, reduces the time that is required to go to market it obviously creates a lot of omni-channel customer experience because all these agile and, and low code platforms what it actually helps you is to create a lot of process uniformity so irrespective of how or or, or you know through which channel the customer connects uh, to the insurance companies the overall experience that he gets is very uniform and that is where you know it, it, it actually helps and the last but the very important piece here is the closed loop automation you know probably you may do a lot of back-end uh, automation you can you can bring in a lot of codes uh, code level changes inside your legacy application but then that does not help you to transform your processes the transformation actually happens 
when the entire process cycle is automated, which even includes the ability to digitally extend the solutions to your partners, to your agents, to to anyone who is external to the organization. Now, so once you know this 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 digital layer is seamlessly connected. With now, not just internally, but even with all these external stakeholders, that basically helps you reduce a lot of your processing time and actually brings in efficiencies, which which you know we have all been talking about. That is something which obviously is the key to the hour. So how it eventually would look like, you know, with with the advent of technologies like a low-code platform. So, you know, just taking back the same scenario wherein you know we have experienced uh, multiple activities which were done. Uh, you know, across teams, and then which actually resulted in a time frame of uh, what we put it as six to seven months, or uh, you know, or, or thirty to forty days, you know, for the product to go live. Now, this is something uh, which is going to change with with uh, the adoption of a low code platform. You know, so assuming the same scenario where a product rollout needs to happen, you know, the management um, team decides on what has to be done. The business users can identify the, the requirements or, or the changes that needs to be brought about in the existing product mix. And then they can nominate people who have been trained on the platform to configure those changes directly themselves. Or even if they send it back to the IT team, the IT team who is trained on working in, in a configurable low code platform does not require to go through the conventional software development cycle route. In fact, you know, they can go ahead and, and uh, make the changes directly inside the system with minimal amount of time. In fact, you know, uh, a low code platform like Nugents even allows uh, the users to generate the specification documents from the platform itself. So unlike the conventional method where the documents are prepared outside and then based on the documents, the system changes are done. Here you can configure the system changes directly inside the system and even generate the specification document from the system, which actually helps you reduce the overall cycle time, uh, you know, in, in terms of making those changes inside the system. And obviously, once these configuration changes are done as part of, you know, general compliance, you want uh, it, it to pass through approval cycle, wherein the approvers can log on to the system, they can see the changes with a complete audit, and they can give, go ahead and give the approval. So, which basically, you know, without requiring any, any major downtime, can start reflecting in your production environment in, in absolutely no time. So this is something which actually results in cutting down a lot of your time in making these changes, you know, or taking these changes to the market. So, you know, probably it can be even as low as five to seven business days for something which, which is not very complex. So that is where the organizations need to look at technologies like a low code platform for which they can actually get a lot of this agility, which it would be required, you know, in, in the times to come going forward. So eventually, if you look at it, what has actually this low code platform brought in uh, for any insurance company? So obviously, one of the major factors is the collaboration within. Now, organizations need not invest or, or you know, probably uh, develop a lot of various siloed point applications which are not you know seamlessly talking to each other which are legacy which are difficult to maintain uh, you know through because of uh, the data exchange issues there are you know issues with regards to data sanity you know data uniformity that's something which goes away because this local platform is something wherein uh, it is enabling the organizations to develop all these applications on one which is seamlessly connected, integrated, and which which you know, actually um, helps the organization, uh, you know, to bring about uh, the ch changes much faster. So you know, so just to list down certain low code uh, benefits of uh, the low code platform. Obviously, you know, uh, as I was mentioning, you need not have a lot of uh, disconnected point applications. Rather, it can all be built on one single configurable layer, which gives you not just the uniformity but also uh, you know results in data consistency across applications and functions ease of orchestration yes you know you know um, unlike conventional mechanisms wherein a lot of effort and time was going in uh, and a workload was going in to bring about those changes going forward it, it is reduced significantly because as i mentioned you know uh, business teams can direct start taking ownership 
of a lot of changes for which they were you know conventionally relying on uh, uh, the IT team even for something as low as making a small logic change it was always required to go back to the IT team wherein you know uh, which would have required uh, the, the cycle to be executed and, and taking a lot of time now this is something wherein the business team themselves owns uh, a lot of configuration modules through which they can actually make changes inside the system in no time Single platform, so obviously, you know, you have one single platform which is managed internally by the organization. So there is no need uh, to depend on multiple vendors, which actually not just reduces the hassles of bringing in all the different vendors working on various technologies on board on one, you know, single consensus for a requirement change. Rather, you know, uh, it would be internally managed within, you know, it, it, it is just one platform which takes care of all of these things. And it also has a, a significant re reduction in the cost, which again is going to be a major factor going forward in terms of how do cost optimizations happen. And the last but, but very important is the, the user experience, not just for the end users or the customers, but also the users who are working on the system. Now, if they need to be much more productive, if they need to be much more efficient, they need to be working on interfaces which are actually much more supportive. You know, they, they, they shouldn't be uh, required to toggle between multiple screens. They should get the entire information on one single screen, including the data, the documents, uh, you know, any past history that needs to be viewed at. And that that basically you know helps in, in them processing the case much faster. And obviously, the, the experience also extends then to the customer where, you know, the same platform can also be extended across to external uh, partners, to customers, who also then get a much better user experience, you know, while interacting with insurance companies. So, you know, uh, you know this is something which, which actually is, is uh, you know, achieved out of Fusion's local platform. But, you know, just to summarize, what is this actual uh, platform or what does it comprise of? So, just to really quickly give you a glimpse of it, you know, obviously the platform is something which is constituting of multiple, uh, you know, modular elements. So, again, the modularity of the platform actually helps you to pick and decide that what is needed for your organization depending depending upon your life, IT landscape. So the ability to configure, you know, uh, various in, uh, masters through MDM layers, ability to define and build the UI, uh, you know, and the interfaces and the front ends quickly through form builders, you know, room configuration, again, a very important factor wherein you can actually uh, adapt it at an enterprise level wherein you, you can use this layer to configure rules across functions you know conventionally we, we always have been looking at the application of rule engine primary underwriting but then it can even be extended to other functions like you know to your games processing to your policy servicing rules so this can actually result in an enterprise rule repository layer which manages rules and logics for all your different business functions process modeling again this is very important because i think one of the very important aspect is how do you optimize your your uh, processes how do you you know bring changes in your processes very faster uh, so that is where the modeling capability in terms of reviewing your processes in terms of making changes in it is something which would be required going forward integration layer again a very important aspect because eventually this low code platform is helping you create a unified interface which needs to talk to your legacy application and that is where the capability to interact with your integrate quickly with multiple applications becomes a key success point of such applications content management obviously you know you know you need to digitize and manage the content at one place and this content should be readily available at the time of transaction processing i think that is something which is very important social adopters yes you know i you know going forward a lot of focus would be you know on digital wherein people may want to connect with you through a lot of uh, you know virtual platforms like the social uh, media platforms and that is where the ability of the platforms to connect seamlessly with your social adopters in terms of you know identifying probable leads or let's say you know proactively taking care of any 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 you know grievance that might be floating around on a social media platform you know basically you know connecting seamlessly or efficiently back to your customers across channels be it whatsapp be it email you know you know be it uh, facebook so i think that is something which is very critical Customer communication management, yes, all your outbound communication needs to be streamlined, needs to be centralized. 
and then this is not just limited to any sort of an intimation that it is going out but even in terms of the documents that are getting generated so they need to be standardized they need to be maintained at one place and again you know with uh, a lot of agility what is also required is the ability to make changes in these communications and these documents in a much faster way and that is something which can actually be achieved with uh, the component uh, like the customer communication manager management or an output management uh, product user management ability to grant excesses controls quickly to the users again becomes very critical mobility again uh, you know a very important aspect there are some organizations which have adopted it uh, to a high extent but then there are some organizations which are still lagging and that is something which is going to give uh, a lot of uh, you know digitization for insurance companies going forward so this can be one of the means wherein the customer and the agent can digitally connect uh, you know uh, to do a lot of digital interaction which was earlier happening you know a lot physically reporting requirements obviously you need to have uh, a lot of visibility a lot of controls in terms of uh, you know uh, how your business is actually working upon is something which is again important rpa and analytics again you know yes the platform um, uh, needs to be uh, agile enough or needs to be adaptable enough to you know uh, to have uh, robotic uh, capabilities and also analytical capabilities which again uh, you know is going to be a very important factor because you know uh, now that uh, uh, the rules and logics are being built inside the system it still requires a manual intervention to manage those rules but then going forward organizations may try to look at you know uh, self learning capabilities wherein based on the past data you know the system should be self evolving self learning there shouldn't be the requirement to manage or develop rules manually is something which is again going to be very important from the context of you know platforms which require minimal manual intervention to maintain and change so uh, coming forward to what would be the applications of uh, you know the low code platform for insurance industry uh, it would be widespread it would include your core processes which are, are your, your primary lines of businesses which is you know uh, centered around things like quotation management customer onboarding underwriting claims management distribution management again a very critical piece going forward because that is something which is uh, going to be very critical when it comes to digitizing a lot of your onboarding activities through a low code uh, solution layer and eventually policy servicing but then the application of a low code platform is not just limited to these core processes once you have a platform in place and once you have sort of optimized all your core processes you can even extend this across to a lot of your horizontal as well as supporting processes so you know processes which are which are just still manual but then obviously they are low in the radar of any uh, insurance companies because they are not deemed to be critical but here the advantage that you get is once you have a platform of such nature you need not invest separately on a lot of these uh, not just your primary function areas but a lot of your supporting and secondary function areas as well i mean everything can all be you know sort of unified and centralized on one layer so processes like like your hr processes like your finance processes like your it service desk processes they can all you know be be sort of consolidated and and you know developed on one single layer similarly your supporting processes like your file onboarding you know records management those are all something which uh, you know uh, going forward can all be streamlined on just you know, on the new gen local platform so obviously you know one of the important aspect is having a platform in place or, or offering a platform to any uh, organization but what is also very critical is the ability to adopt uh, uh, these uh, technologies by the it by the insurance company and that may happen only when you know it is not just the platform which is offered but it is also pre-built solutions or template solutions uh, uh, on top of it so obviously that is something uh, which actually enables the organization not to start from ground zero you know they they, they start uh, you know uh, from a level wherein there is already a solution in place and obviously uh, that can be then adapted and and make aligned as per the business requirements of a specific insurance companies much faster because of the fact that this entire pre-built solution is on top of a low code platform so you know um, unlike conventional point applications which you know even if they are matching 
let's say 70 or 80 percent of the business requirements to fill the delta of 20 percent take a humongous amount of time which eventually then you know uh, just fails the purpose of having a pre-built application in place so this is something which is overcome as a challenge here is you know even if let's assume the the, the pre-built uh, solution matches only to 50 or 60 percent of your requirements but then you can quickly fill in the delta of the 30 40 percent in much lesser time because filling the delta does not require a lot of coding to be done it can all be achieved primarily through configurations and changes so you know but again uh, coming to the fact that um, there need to be solutions in place uh, so that organizations can you know um, start looking at it and can you know uh, take them to the market much faster so for that you know what Nugent also offers uh, on top of its low code platform is what we call it as uh, solution accelerators which are pre-built solution or template solutions uh, available uh, you know based on our experience of automating uh, such applications um, for various insurance companies across the globe so you know it can be both in the individual insurance line it can be in the group insurance uh, there's something on agency and distribution management and another important piece is the service management which again is uh, very critical so things like point of sale automation which is again linking back to your distribution automation or your digital transfer onboarding streamline of your entire new business journey claims management and group group again is one of the most neglected uh, you know business areas for any insurance companies uh, you know in a lot of manual intervention a lot of manual processes still happen so that is something uh, for which uh, has done significant amount of work in a lot of insurance companies and that is taken as a base when we go to any of our solutions or for any of our prospective in customers so you know just to uh, you know bring uh, in the end certain examples or certain simple implementations of case studies of the work that we have done uh, of similar nature or that we are currently doing uh, just highlighted a few case studies so you know uh, one of the case studies um, in india that we are doing currently max life insurance wherein you know we are actually uh, automating the entire new business and underwriting uh, solution for them on this low code platform obviously you know they already had a solution in place for this but then uh, it was again uh, coming out uh, from the fact that uh, that solution uh, was not much configurable there was a huge uh, vendor dependency it was a huge cost required to maintain that application and that is where you know uh, the new gen solution was evaluated and it was decided to be gone ahead with wherein you know the entire um, customer onboarding and writing uh, not just the front end, even the rules and logics uh, are being developed on the new gen platform, which actually gives them a lot of flexibility in terms of making the changes much faster. Now, again, another important aspect is, you know, configurability um, is one of the points, but then again, you know, scalability uh, is a major factor because, you know, um, you know while, while uh, these tanks are actually throwing up a lot of challenges, but then they're also throwing up a lot of opportunities. You know, there, there's uh, actually a lot of focus, especially in people in India to get insured because a lot of our population is still underinsured. And that is where, you know, eventually you'll see a lot of push or a lot of volume growth uh, going forward. And for that to happen, you need to have systems in place which are scalable, you know, which can actually work in high load scenario. And that is something uh, that we have already proven ourselves in, in uh, you know, LIC, which obviously happens to be one of uh, the biggest insurance company, not just in India, but even worldwide. So, you know, uh, that is something that we can boast of that we have been able to take uh, the, the transactional load of, of someone like, uh, you know, life insurance corporation, which itself speaks a volume of the fact that the, the solution is highly scalable and it can always get to high roots. You know, um, Again, you know, further extending the fact that uh, a similar um, implementation that we are currently doing for AXA in, in um, the Asia Pacific region, which is again, you know, transforming the entire health into end health insurance package. So here what we are doing is, you know, uh, we are basically, you know, replacing the legacy uh, health administration system. And in fact, we are developing an entire end to end administration system on the Nugent BPM uh, or, uh, or the Nugent layer itself, which is basically uh, helping them uh, bring in the element of, of configurability, bring in the element of agility uh, in their functions going forward. So all the business functions with regard to the health line of business are now being transformed into the Nugent layer from the legacy layer. And that is something which would eventually change uh, the business working of the way they were working earlier. 
another example of a similar work that we have done in the life insurance space is, is uh, down south in, in Sri Lanka, wherein uh, one of the leading insurance companies, the Sri Lanka Jan Shakti Insurance, is actually been using us uh, for you know decoupling uh, their legacy policy administration system, wherein you know the entire uh, end-to-end uh, application level requirements have been brought to the Nugen Agile layer and the course has just been or the legacy policy administration system has just been pushed to the back as a data store um, and, and, and the entire transaction processing the user interfacing happens on the Nugen layer which is actually giving them a lot of benefits in terms of you know, um, the way they were um, you know uh, processing earlier to the way they were doing it now which is actually uh, you know um, bringing in productivity benefits stat benefits increased customer base for them so with this, uh, just, I just have a couple of slides basically to talk about or just to give you a glimpse of Nugen who we are. So obviously we have been um, into the, the market for pretty long now. We have an almost 30-year-old um, or 28-year-old organization. We have a global presence. We have uh, customer base uh, in India. Obviously we are present significantly in India, but then uh, it's not just India. We are also now expanded uh, significantly uh, in uh, across the globe. So even in insurance, we have um, you know, uh, a lot of presence in India and outside India, there are a good uh, amount of customers that we have across territories. Uh, we uh, obviously are working in multiple verticals, but you know, banking and insurance uh, are the ones which are the key verticals for us. And being a product company, there's a lot of uh, focus on product innovation, and that is where you know uh, the, the the platform is keep on getting enhancing and further improving with the the you know. Uh, configuration or with the, the you know extension of a lot of um, new and technologies into this framework so we we have brought in technologies like you know uh, digital sensing blockchain rpm and rpa you know intelligent content services analytics all these things are actually helping us to make the platform future ready we are also adapting with the times we are bringing in so our purpose is you know the customers who are with us or who would be with us would be secure not just for the current time but also for the times coming forward so yeah so with this i think i'll, I'll wind up my presentations i will oh, make the session open for any any questions now Thanks, Shantanu. Uh, the way you summed up with the examples, it was quite good. Uh, so here are the questions. The first question which I received is uh, for Sushil. What patterns have you observed in terms of claims in India region after the COVID-19 crisis? Uh See, I think uh, it's a it's a very uh, uh, interesting question, and uh, uh, just to give you a sense, we've seen uh, sort of a mixed bag. Uh, there has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, an anticipation that uh, there will be uh, uh, a spike in uh, claims around the uh, the life insurance part. Uh, there will be, uh, you know, impact on the uh, you know lines that. Uh, Catered to trade, uh, income protection, uh, also any uh, sort of a uh, you know uh, event-related uh, insurances. Uh, but having said that, uh, you know there is also uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know reduction in claims, especially for the motor uh, or third party. Uh, we've not seen uh, you know any spike there. In fact, uh, uh, the insurance companies that we've been discussing with uh, are repurposing. Uh, you know their claims processing teams uh, for other tasks that can help them uh, you know uh, cater to their customer service so it's been a mixed bag depending on the product line to be honest okay and the uh, the following question is also a bit related uh, that is how do you think what do you think is the preparedness level of the small and medium enterprises for crisis like this i think uh, uh, Clearly, uh, what we've uh, uh, seen is that the preparedness from uh, a perspective of uh, responding to the crisis uh, was not uh, optimal. We've seen a lot of uh, small and medium enterprises struggling uh, to stay in business. And uh, I think there is a lot of push from the government uh, in terms of uh, extending uh, loans uh, and the moratorium as well. And uh, 
as as we stand we are actually working back with the other uh, financial institutions to see how we could uh, you know help uh, uh, and engage with the ministry of finance to uh, to support the msmes in in times like this so clearly uh, you know there was there was a lack of preparedness uh, in terms of uh, responding to the crisis but again this was an unprecedented of a sort once in a 100 uh, year uh, phenomena so yes there is there's obviously a lot uh, that that i think uh, will have to happen over the course of next 6 to 8 months thanks sushil uh, the next question is for uh, shantanu uh, how will the solution take care of regulations and regulatory process yes uh, so yes obviously you know with the current situations uh, there would be uh, a lot of compliances with regards to even regulations coming in from a regulator wherein um, organizations would need to adapt or make changes in the way of working uh, they need to you know bring in those regulations uh, at the same time without causing any business disruption and i think that is where uh, a platform like this actually helps organizations because you know uh, can actually look at it analyze bring those regulatory level changes in uh, the solutions much faster without the need of actually disrupting their business and i think that uh, would give you know them the capability to uh, comply to all your all the all the you know uh, regulatory changes that are going to come and that are coming but at the same time you know uh, being business effective uh okay and uh, the last question is uh, what do you think is the uh, usp of solution by new zealand so i think the usp uh, so they are uh, one of the very important factors which again i would like to highlight is you know what we are trying to bring to any insurance company here is not just a platform so unlike most of uh, you know our peers Who, who have a platform or who have you know a point application what we are trying to bring to you is the best of both worlds what we are saying is it's a platform and not a point application and hence it is it is much more configurable it is much more agile and at the same time it is also not a pure platform it is some it's it's a solution which is on a platform so it is actually bringing the best of both worlds which is you know giving the platform capability and at the same time giving a pre built solution capabilities as well Great. So thanks, Sushil. Thanks, Shantanu, for your valuable insights on this topic. Thank you to the entire audience for your valuable time and tremendous response. We shall be sending across the presentation and the transcript for all your questions. Good day, goodbye, and have a great day. Thank you, Ruchika. Thanks. Thanks, Ruchika.